Hello guys, today's Logic video, we are just going to have a look at the inspector inside Logic and how you can use that to quickly change some key effects and parameters in your tracks. Let's go! Say my name aloud. Hi guys, welcome to another Logic video. Today we're going to have a look at the inspector and some of the features that are hidden inside that that are super, super useful for quick access and quick edits. So if these videos are helpful for you, please like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's anything else you have question-wise or videos you'd like to see, comment down below. So the inspector is relevant to whatever you're doing at one particular time and is accessible through the shortcut I or via pressing the little I up here on the left. Now, for example, if I grab this bit of MIDI information here, you can see it pops up as a main base 25 uh, because that is what that particular region is named. If I click this little region arrow, it's going to drop down some more information about that. Now, I can quickly mute that just that particular region but not anything else and you can see I use that in projects when I'm creating I just uh, mute sections out and take them away rather than muting the channel and automating that I just mute that little area you can also turn the loop parameters on so it will just loop that section what also is really nice you can individually quantize that section of audio currently it's quantize off but I've got quantize values here and I can actually use the quantize value of one of the drum samples that is in the project as well it's directly from there you've also got your quantize swing setting for that you do have to have some quantize enabled on it um, you then got the option to transpose which is super useful so if I was to grab these two sections for example here we'll solo that and this is what we currently have probably a terrible choice let's not use the subline let's use the baseline cool so if we then take the first section here I can then transpose that up by 12 and that's one octave higher now I didn't have to go into the editor to do that I can just drag that up and down as I see fit and adjust that which is really useful for example copying this baseline I then would just be able to say drop this by 12 and I've then got my subline as well done nice and quickly you can also adjust velocity although it doesn't necessarily apply to MIDI you can't adjust the velocity in that respect unfortunately um, it adjusts everything it just all of the velocity values um, what you can also do is use this delay option here to work out timing and measures in milliseconds I use this all the time to work out reverb timings and compressor timings so it gives you those exact figures based on your project tempo um, you then also got dynamics gate time they are things we're going to dip into in much later videos because we're starting to get a bit advanced there We'll take out of more let's get rid of region again if we then go into track we can change your track icon to anything you so see fit so for example if this was my recording vocal section i might do this just so i can quickly at a glance uh, check that out you can rename as well you've then got midi channels whether it goes in channel 1 through 16 or if all midi channels affect that freeze mode um, I will link my freezing tracks video right here so you can see what that means and why that's relevant. Another transpose option and velocity options as well. If we choose a piece of audio, we get some slightly different information. We've got mute, loop, and we've got gain. Now, gain is really useful for when you've got things like a uh, snare track here, for example. If I wanted to have the second snare be slightly less, I can just gain it down by 1.5 like that. And it will show that in representation of the audio. You see how it's now slightly smaller. 
So we can be quite extreme with it and it would display it quite extreme. And that's really useful if like me, you like to work with audio and editing audio uh, in here rather than putting it in a sampler and putting it in MIDI. You can then still have that effect and give some velocity and gain change nice and quickly. Go into more and we've got some similar things here, apart from we also have fade in and fade out. Now if you edit audio a lot, where have we gone? There we go. If you edit audio a lot and cut parts out and you're editing vocals, fading can be really important. And when this is on, you can select this piece of audio and you can adjust your fade in and fade out times. You can also adjust what these do. So I can have type out or cross fade, S curve fades, as well as I can have what's called a slowdown. So for example, let's put a slowdown on this second snare. I'm going to have taken the impact out of the first snare and then slowed the second one down. That gives you a nice instant effect just straight there from the inspector. The track section is then very, very similar in respect to what you're doing here. Guys, I hope that has been helpful for you. Those are some little quick hacks that you can use from inside the inspector. I will see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Oh.